All right, our simple 10 superstitions that I posted on the Facebook page for Simple Tans by Hawaii Tans Pro. I wanted to clarify because I got a lot of responses on this. Um, superstition number one don't look at the draw until you win round one. And that's all just to reaffirm that you always got to live in the present. Don't think about the future, don't think about the past. And oftentimes you look at the draw, you get all excited, you're like, oh, I have a really good draw, and you create this pressure for yourself. And before you know it, you're thinking about your next match, say your first match. So I just simply call for my time, and I go to the tournament, and I just play my first round. It's easier now in Bangkok because I can't retie, and the entire draw is in tie. Number two, you use the bathroom before going to court. This may seem silly, but... Uh, sometimes when you have a referee, they don't let you go. You're just not allowed to go to the bathroom whenever you want to go. Remember, when you have a referee, you have to ask for permission before you leave the court. You can't just leave the court. And if you just leave the court in the middle of your match, you can get pen penalties. Um, I also use this time to focus. I go to the bathroom, and I think about what's going to happen in the match, and how I'm going to play the first point, and the first game, and what my goals are. You know, And I, I just try to clear my head and just focus. Oftentimes at tournaments, you're surrounded by people and draws a lot of energy off you and distracts you. So you want to just clear your head for your match and focus. Three, after the round, shower and cool down. Eat something, but get away from people. People just take so much energy and they give you a false sense of confidence. And what do I mean by that? Like, say you barely squeak by in a match and you know you didn't play very well to get, to get by the match. Most of your friends will be like, hey, you played great. And in your head, you're like, no, I didn't. I got lucky. They didn't play very well. So you want to just take care of your business after the match is over. Not use the bathroom, but take a shower, cool down. I like to, right after my match, if there's a swimming pool, I like to jump in the swimming pool and just sit in the pool and cool down. If not, I just like to go somewhere and just sit quietly and drink water and have some food and try to get my body temperature back to normal a little bit before I shower. If I shower immediately, then what happens is I'm so hot, I'm still sweating after I'm done after I'm done with the shower. So it's useless. Number four. This is a huge one. Relax between rounds. It's always about the energy level. I don't like to talk to people and I don't like to sit in the sun. I'll watch some matches, but if I sit next to someone and I'm talking to them and I'm watching matches, it takes a lot of energy for me. And I get tired. So, so a common theme in these first rule rules, first four rules, is basically watch your energy output and relax and refresh yourself and get ready for the next match. Number five, drink water, electrolyte, and I drink Diet Coke on every changeover. And the reason I drink the water is just simply to replace my water. I need the electrolyte to replace all that electrolytes I'm losing and some sweating, potassium and sugar and sodium. And I need a little bit of caffeine in my body to keep my energy levels up. And for me, I need the caffeine boost. Yes, the caffeine boost can lead to cramping, but I drink enough water and electrolyte that it doesn't do that. I read the article a long time ago about drinking Gatorade half and half of water because you don't want to have too much electrolyte. You have to find that balance. So find out works for, what works for you. I use Royal D Jelly in a powder form, in a liter. I drop it in my jug. It's full of ice, and I have nice cold water in every changeover. Number six, eat two hours before you play. That's very important for your first match. If the match is at 8 o'clock in the morning, you get up at 6 a.m. and you eat. That way your body has two hours to get ready for that first match. It's harder during the course of the day because you might have multiple matches, and so it's hard to time the eating. But you have to eat something between matches, okay? So that gives your body, gets your body up. But you also want to have something in your stomach. The worst cramps I ever have is my body is empty. My stomach is empty, and I'm just depleted after a match. And so I'm reloading with water, I'm reloading with water, and I start cramping, you know? And so the key has always been to have food. Not big, heavy protein food, but something light, chicken, something light, eggs, you know, nothing really oily. Simple chicken rice kind of thing, or some kind of light starch. Number seven, take a nap, if possible, between matches. In Thailand, we do round robins. So we play like a match at eight, a match at 10, a match at 12, and then we have to wait around for the final probably at two. And so I like to try to take a nap before that final. And for me, I listen to some, some 
common thing. I listened to the soundtrack from Game of Thrones, um, the Night King instrumental song, and it clears my head, and my brain doesn't think about anything. I just listen to music, and ironically, I see the show again in my head, and then I just kind of doze off. You got to find something that allows you to clear your head between matches. A nap is good. Too long a nap is bad. Your nap should be timed so that you wake up and you have like 20 minutes to get ready for your match. Don't wake up and just immediately play. Okay. Number eight, don't watch your opponents play too much. They might just freak you out. It's good to scout. I watch a couple games. Where they serve, what kind of serve they have, how do they return, their forehand better, their backhand better, do they poach a lot, and then I just forget about it and I walk away. Because if I watch too much of the match, I might freak out. I mean, oh my god, the guy's so good. I'm gonna lose. And you know, and that native influence is really tough on you. You just gotta go in there with clear focus and try to play your game. And normally your game is gonna be good enough because you can't do more than your game. Just go in there and see what happens. Number nine, always celebrate trophies. As there might be a day you won't get any. I kind of took it for granted for a little while. You know, I was winning a lot of tournaments and I stopped doing my my ceremonial celebration for tr for a trophy. And that's only just a nice dinner. Um, you want to celebrate the trophies because they're good moments. You want to appreciate your doubles partners. You want to realize there's more to tennis than just tennis. You know, and, and the relationships you have with your friends are more important than these tennis matches. You might not be able to play with everyone. I mean, that's just a given. Sometimes two people on paper are a lot better than what they really appear like on the court. Try to find a good partner. And when you find a good partner that you gel with and your games gel, Keep that partner and be very, I mean, there'll be good days and bad days. Like the last three tournaments, ironically, in the round robin, I've lost the second match. But, you know, my partner and I just look at each other like, eh, it happens. We played well. They're just good. And then we'll go to the next match. And we won the third match. And we've been in these ties. And they count games and we won. So you got to be very positive and celebrate your trophies because, you know, those are moments. Finally, I started to allude to it at number 10. Be nice to your partner. It's just tennis, and tennis is, is after all just a game. Again, they're meant to be fun. But your doubles partner, I mean, it's someone willing to play with you a tournament, who's making an investment. They're giving up that day to play a tournament with you. They're taking it serious like you do, and they're giving it their all. Granted, they might not perform to their expectation, but you know, when you're playing singles and your forehand doesn't work or your backhand doesn't work, you don't yell at your backhand. Hey, what are you doing? You don't yell at your forehand. Hey, what are you doing? But sometimes in tennis, you lose sight of this, you know, and, and you have to put a value on appreciating your doubles partners because they're hard to find. Um, and the way you treat your doubles partner, ironically, is very obvious to everyone. And so if you're kind of a jerk to your doubles partner, you won't have many doubles partners, you know. Um, the last is a PS. Avoid sports that could hurt you for tennis because you're good in tennis, so nurture it. Like, I used to play basketball a lot, but as I got older, I can't play basketball. It hurts. Um, I was doing some judo. Hurt my wrist, hurt my knee, so I stopped doing that. So, if you're a tennis player, focus your emphasis on tennis and try to think of these 10 tips. My, ten, my simple 10 superstitions. A lot of it's just mental, you know, and hopefully this helps you become a better tennis player.